Okay, so this is me getting ready to change out the substrate in the Pac-Man Frogs tanks. And I got my tubs ready. And I'm going to go ahead and get that started. So to begin the process, I have two tubs, one for each Pac-Man frog. I have a gallon jug that I'm going to fill up with warm water. I'm going to take the Pac-Man frogs out, put them in the tub. They're going to soak for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then I'm going to take the old substrate out of their terrariums and put them into that tub over there. I reuse the substrate outside in my garden. Uh, you'll see it around my pond once I make a video on that. And yeah, let's go ahead and get this started. I'm pretty sure that they are ready to get nice and soaked. I don't know, really don't use my hands to dig around here because I don't want to get bit. But there's Mr. Waffle down there and I do this about once a week this is because amphibians such as the Pac-Man frog well any amphibians really they require nice clean environments that's why their tanks are so simple it's just so that it's easy for me to take out their substrate once a week change it out make sure there's no toxins or ammonia buildup and yeah, let's go ahead and get that started. So before I actually take the Pac-Man frogs out of their tanks, um, I do need to get their substrate ready. These are bricks and they need to soak for a couple minutes before I can actually use them. Um, I do use Eco Earth and a combination of plantation soil as well not much left in this bag they're basically the same thing all it is is cocoa fiber um, this is the number one recommended brand right here plantation soil it's a little bit cheaper than um, eco earth and it also comes in bricks it is bioactive ready so i do also get to use the old bedding from their tanks um, for some of my live feeders as well but uh yeah I need to go ahead and open this up and put it in this tub and I'm going to weigh down the brick with a good old spool of airline tubing so that it sits in water and expands quicker. And I do forget to mention as well that um, I do use the chlorinator on all the water that I use on the Pac-Man frogs or I go out and I buy distilled water. That is just simply because again amphibians are very sensitive to impurities in their water as well as anything in their environment so I just use TetraSafe. It doesn't have a buffer in it or anything like that that changes the pH and uh, yeah it's the same thing as RepTosafe. I've been using it with reptiles before and other amphibians, so there's not much of a difference between this and Reptisafe. Uh, again, there is no buffer in it. It's just regular old water conditioner. And really, if you're using this for fish too, there isn't a difference between this and Prime other than Prime has a buffer in it and it is its own synthetic ammonia. So it does mess with your pH, whereas TetraSafe does not. Um, I just prefer to use this for the Pac-Man frogs especially, and any other tanks that I just don't want to mess with the pH with, including my shrimp tank. So as I'm doing all of this, I do want to talk a little bit about Pac-Man frog care. They are pretty easy pets to keep. Um, as you can see, all I do is feed them, change out their substrate once a week. There are a lot of different ways you can set up their little terrariums, but I prefer to keep it as simple as possible. 
just because it's easier on maintenance. They are pretty much stationary. Like this is as much action as you get from the Pac-Man frogs. Absolutely nothing. They're basically a pet rock that likes to eat. Once in a while you can hear them croaking. Um, especially if you have a male. And that's about it. The most exciting part of having a Pac-Man frog is feeding it. And I've had a Pac-Man frog before. Um, during the hurricane, I had trouble getting food for him, so he ended up passing away, unfortunately. So I've learned from that, so now I have several different types of foods that Pac-Man frogs can eat, which does include um, any guppies that I don't want to breed that are deformed in any way or any fish. They also eat uh, Peking mice. I prefer frozen only. As well as hornworms, millworms. Uh, you can feed earthworms and of course crickets. Now, this doesn't take long to get ready but um, I want to get this done as quickly as I can so that my water stays nice and warm for them and this one brick that I have it's enough um, it's about a brick for each tank you want to keep the substrate not too deep but deep enough so that the Pac-Man frogs can completely bury themselves if they want to and when they are buried, I do not mess with them. I leave them alone and wait for them to come out again. Usually it takes about a day or two. And as you can see, that's what the substrate is. It's basically cocoa fiber that turns into this little mesh. And you want it damp but not drenched. So about like this what you want to put in your tank and I will add that the substrate alone does not grow any plants so if you're wanting to just use this it's not going to grow any plants for you other than pothos over there but like I said I keep it really simple so it's easier on me and easier on the Pac-Man frogs So it is really hard to film me handling the frog with just one hand um, safely. <laughs> but this is Mr. Waffle. He's about the size of my hand. Well, the palm of my hand. And I'm just going to gently throw him into the tub. It's nice and warm for him. I do have moss in here. I'm going to add that moss just in case he doesn't really feel like being in the tub for too long. But I do this also to examine him as well. Look at his feet and he's peeing on me because he is not happy. Not at all. Yeah, there we go. Let it all out. And, um... Yeah, this is Mr. Waffle. He is a pineapple morph. And, ooh, okay. I'm just gonna let you go for now. Nice frog pee everywhere. But that is him. I haven't been bit by him yet. I have been bit by a little house over there. He's a lot smaller, and I'll show you guys him. But I do not handle my Pac-Man frogs regularly, and I don't let my kids hold them either. Um, I do let them throw food in here once in a while, but they're just not a type of pet that you should be handling constantly. They do have teeth, and they prefer to just do that. Just sit and wait and hide. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw him in that tub but I'm not going to film that because I feel safer with using both of my hands to handle him and here's a much better look 
at him. He's still a little dirty. But he can hop over the tub now. He's gotten so much bigger since I got him. So I'm just gonna keep my eye on him. I do have an extra screen lid if I need to put it over there. And the 10 gallon screen lids actually fit perfectly over the tub, so that's another option. But what I do with this moss is I kind of soak it a little bit in there as well, just in case he doesn't feel like soaking in the water. Like I said, I don't handle him very much at all. This is a once a week thing, so I don't think he likes me very much. But a closer look at the tank since he is out. He has a pothos growing in his tank. I didn't put one in House's tank because um, he's so tiny. I wanted to keep track of him. But that's it. It's about two and a half inches of cocoa fiber in here. And the reason why you change it out, well, why I change it out once a week, is because in the area where they burrow, they will sit there for days and days at a time just pooping and peeing in that one little area and a lot of times what will happen is they'll have a buildup of ammonia in that little area that they're in their skin will absorb it and they'll do what's called toxing out and you can see youtube videos of that as well and that's basically the amphibians way of getting rid of the toxins in their body and it is poisonous to them to constantly sit in a dirty tank, which is why I like to keep the tank nice and simple so that I can remove any of that excess pee and poop and whatever that's in here. And it just makes my life easier and it makes a nice, healthy Pac-Man frog. And this is an empty tank. Like I said, I take out the entire bed of substrate just to be safe. Um, I know some keepers do like to keep the substrate for longer than a week. I don't want to risk it because I've already lost a Pac-Man frog before. And it wasn't due to toxin out, but it was due to unfortunate events. But anyways, I really want to make sure that I'm taking really good care of these guys and this is Mr. House over here you see the size difference and he's just a regular albino well this guy is a pineapple so this is the finished product I do add a little bit of catapa leaves into their substrate just to add a little bit more texture to it and I think it adds more cover as well they are an ambush predator they do like to hide and I'm going to let him settle down a little bit. I know he probably wants to get in that water. And uh, I'll work on Mr. House's tank. Like I said, again, this is a very simple 10 gallon setup. We got a water dish, the pothos, his cocoa fiber bedding with a little bit of catapa leaves, the moss, I took some of the moss out. And yeah, that's about it. And the tank is, pretty warm like too warm to the touch for me because I did use warm water to make the substrate so I'm just gonna give that a little bit of time and um, let it cool off a little bit I don't want it too hot and this is mr. house and you can see a clear difference in size he's all puffed up and he's not happy and I'm going to go ahead and just drop him over here. Water's a little bit chilly. And yeah, there's Mr. House. Here's Mr. Waffle. And he can't quite climb out of his tub yet. But he's getting there. So I ended up having to use two more bricks just to fill up the substrate. Usually it's a brick per tank, but um, I guess it was kind of skimped out on me. I did soak it for quite a bit before I tried to put it back into the tank to see how deep the substrate would be, but this is House's tank. And 
that substrate is pretty deep, but it's fine. I'm not going to do anything else with it. And I like to add, I hate making videos where you're doing something and then trying to talk about the care and keeping of an animal because you kind of have to do it quickly. At least I have to. And um, I'm doing the best I can with this. But if I had multiple cameras, it'd be one thing. Uh, there is mess everywhere in the fish room at the moment. So I didn't want to set up my other camera just because of that. And I don't have my YouTube face on today. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this up and we'll see both of the frogs in their tanks.